people say the stupidest things about strength training. Today, we're gonna shoot down 10 of the most stupidest of all. And if you're over 50 or 60 or 70, you need to watch me destroy number 10. Hey, Grace Deal Nation, it's Sully here with the Barbell Prescription. Every now and then, I feel the urge to lash out against the more persistent and pestiferous myths about strength training for the athlete of aging, many of which are perpetuated by the people who should most know better, doctors and fitness professionals. It's been a while since I scratched the itch, and who among us doesn't want their itch scratched? We'd better get started. Number one, strength training is dangerous after 50. We're running into this fetid libel with less regularity, and I'd like to think that Grace Deal and the Barbell Prescription have played some small part in that, but we still hear it from time to time. And check out these examples from Toronto Home Care Assistance, which admonishes seniors not to squat, and SeniorLifestyle.com, which cautions seniors against squats, bench presses, high intensity interval training, presses, deadlifts, and so on. Anytime you hear that strength training with barbells is not safe, you'll notice one thing that's never mentioned. Any supporting data for this assertion. Research supporting the safety of resistance training is so voluminous, however, and is continuing to grow at such a rate that I would go so far as to say that any health professional who propagates the myth that it is dangerous has entirely impeached his own credibility. If your doctor tells you that strength training with barbells is dangerous, you probably need a new doctor. Yeah, that's right, I said that. Number two, cardio is more important than strength, or vice versa. People love to argue about the primacy of cardio versus strength, as if it were an either or conundrum, or as if the two were entirely unrelated. In the barbell prescription, we lay out the scientific rationale putting strength training at the center of an exercise prescription for healthy aging but not to the exclusion of cardiometabolic conditioning. Indeed, our book cites a mountain of evidence indicating that strength training and conditioning are highly complementary and that both are required, particularly after the novice phase is complete. Which brings us to a related myth, the dogmatic assertion that athletes in general and older adults in particular need aerobic fitness before they undertake strength training. There is no body of published data establishing that this is the case, and a great deal of empiric field data indicating otherwise. What do we actually see on the platform every time untrained, sedentary, deconditioned people over 50 begin training with barbells? Well, they get more fit. Their work capacity improves, their endurance improves, their exercise tolerance improves. If you're deconditioned, then strength training is cardio. Later on, you're going to need a committed specific conditioning program because, because of course you do. We need you trained across the entire fitness and metabolic spectrum. For the untrained raw master's novice, our emphasis on training with barbells isn't because we don't like cardio. It's because at this stage, barbells will check all the boxes, including the conditioning requirement. The strength versus cardio debate is a total red herring. Number three, you can't lose weight by training for strength. Well, yes, of course you can. People do it all the time. The question is whether you should and when. If you're a 70-year-old female with low bone density, minimal muscle mass, increased body fat, and a body weight of 118 pounds, I don't want you to lose weight. I want you to gain muscle and just see if you don't look and feel better. But if you're sedentary, deconditioned and obese, and you start at Gray Steel or Starting Strength Austin or 5x3 in Baltimore, we're still not going to worry about weight loss at first. We're going to ask you to start cleaning up your diet, sure, one habit at a time, while you focus on the most important thing, getting strong. Why? Because if you get strong, you're going to collaterally improve your muscle mass your insulin sensitivity, your baseline glucose and triglyceride utilization, and your exercise capacity. You may or may not lose weight during this stage, but you will improve your body composition. Once you become an intermediate athlete, we can focus more on fat loss with increasing utilization of conditioning. And that focus on fat loss will always be 
more about what you do in the kitchen than what you do in the gym, no matter what kind of exercise modality you emphasize. Number four, strength training will decrease your flexibility and make you muscle bound. This is addressed at length in the barbell prescription, but you don't even have to look that far. We never observe loss of flexibility in properly conducted strength training programs, ever. We observe the opposite because proper training will incorporate exercises that exploit the full range of human movement. Squats, presses, deadlifts, and bench presses manifest the building blocks of our physical lives, forcing us to get strong throughout our entire natural range of motion. Again, if somebody says this to you, you can stop listening because they don't know what they're talking about. Tell us about your experiences with strength training and mobility and maybe give us a thumbs up while you're at it. Number five, strength training will destroy your joints. This vicious traducement is hanging on for dear life as a favorite of outdated orthopedic doctrine and some of the more pestilent types of fitness gurus. Of course, the opposite is true. Strength training confers manifold benefits to joints, particularly in the setting of osteoarthritis, where it decreases pain, preserves function and mobility, decreases the systemic inflammation that makes arthritis worse, improves muscle and bone mass around affected joints, and preserves the self-efficacy and independence that so often fall prey to advanced arthritic disease. Strength training doesn't cure arthritis, and those with advanced bone-on-bone -bone disease need new joints or other intensive measures, after which they should return to training. But strength training simply does not cause arthritis, and if you already have arthritis, it will do nothing but help. Now, I know a lot of you have experienced training with arthritis. Please share your story in the comments. Number six, strength training will worsen your blood pressure. Wrong again. Our books cite study after study showing that strength training decreases systolic and diastolic blood pressure, as any vigorous exercise will. Observations that strength training decreases arterial compliance have never been correlated with the development of hypertension from strength training. A classic example of the distinction between a surrogate physiological marker and a clinically relevant patient-oriented outcome. Now, this particular myth is a subtype of the category of because it's not cardio, it's not good for your heart myths. Again, we deal with this at length in the book, but suffice to say that strength training improves triglycerides, cholesterol levels, insulin sensitivity, and systemic inflammatory markers, all of which have been correlated more or less robustly with cardiovascular health and cardiac events. If you're worried about your cardiovascular health, your exercise prescription needs strength training. Number seven, lightweight for high reps. This may not even be a strength training myth because lightweight for a high reps, while it might improve your strength over a sedentary baseline, isn't strength training. This is a pernicious and contentious issue, and it seems to spring from a peculiar form of magical thinking, a fuzzy logic that equates five pounds for 10 reps with 25 pounds for two reps. It doesn't work that way. And indulgence in magical thinking is the only way you could possibly be lured into thinking otherwise especially if you're enabled by a so-called coach who wants to help you believe it. At Graysteel and in the barbell prescription, we like the prescription of high volume when it's indicated and helpful, particularly for upper body exercises. But if you train properly for any period of time, you will know that the experience of a single at 250 pounds is nothing like the experience of a set of 10 at 25 pounds. They are qualitatively different phenomena and completely different experiences. Look, my friends, at Graysteel, we've seen deconditioned, sarcopenic, 70-year-old men get to squat singles at 200 pounds. But we've never seen any of them get there by lifting 20 pounds for sets of 10 or 50 pounds for sets of four, ever. More to the point, lifting lightweight for high reps avoids the intensity and loading that are such a powerful part of the effectiveness of the barbell prescription. The components of the sick aging phenotype have deep pathophysiological roots. Insulin resistance, osteopenia, sarcopenia, and systemic inflammation are dug in. It takes strong doses of strong medicine to dig them out. 
A heavy set of five is just that, strong medicine that digs far deeper than a set of 20 at one quarter of the weight. We love training across a spectrum of rep ranges, including eights and tens when appropriate. But to build strength, you have to do some work on the high intensity, low rep end of the spectrum. That's just real. Number eight, you have to eat too much protein. Another consistent loser. The underlying idea here is that older adults have an anabolic resistance that requires them to ingest even more protein than their younger counterparts. So much protein that they'll damage their kidneys. We absolutely agree that masters have anabolic resistance, but we continue to recommend one gram of protein per pound of lean body weight per day for older athletes engaged in heavy resistance training, which is pretty much what we recommend for younger athletes. This level of protein intake is contraindicated in many forms of chronic kidney disease, but has never been shown to damage the healthy kidney. The real difficulty with protein isn't that it's bad for you, it's that it can be a challenge to get enough to be good for you if you're engaged in heavy training. If you've conquered your protein target and you're over 40, tell us how you did it in the comments. Next, number nine, you can get all the benefit of strength training from bodyweight exercise. This is related to myth number seven and is another example of neglecting the importance of intensity in addressing the components of the sick aging phenotype. Don't get me wrong. If bodyweight training is all you will do or all you can do or have the equipment and facilities to do, please do it. It's far, far better than the sedentary alternative. And yeah, it's really good for you. But bodyweight training simply cannot compare with barbell training for strength because there is no exercise modality that can compete with barbell training's wide therapeutic window and its exquisite dosing, its comprehensive impact on fitness attributes and energy systems, its specific activity and effectiveness against the sick aging phenotype, or its simplicity and efficiency. The barbell prescription lays out in great detail exactly why this is so, why the barbell is superior across all of these metrics. Nothing else comes close to checking all the boxes, not dumbbells, not kettlebells, not yoga or tai chi or running or body weight training. And I say that as a coach who loves dumbbells and yoga and Tai Chi and bodyweight training and even running for people who are into it. But barbells are the strength training modality of choice for athletes in a wide range of disciplines. And barbells are also the modality of choice for athletes engaged in the most extreme sport of all, aging well. Number 10, it's too late. Now, if you're a new viewer, or if you've never read our book or blog or newsletter, you might be forgiven for thinking that it's too late for you or someone you love. But we have found that when people think it's too late, it turns out not to be too late. I have yet to encounter a trainee who's too old, too debilitated, too afflicted with Parkinson or arthritis or MS or cancer or obesity or diabetes, too stooped from osteoporosis, too deconditioned, or just too weak to train. Of course, it's possible that you could be my first, but not likely. The beauty of the barbell prescription is that it works for everybody who gives it a chance, every time. But is it too late for you? In the final analysis, that's only for you to say. But before you do, I'd ask you to watch this.
I think you're out of excuses.